Welcome, welcome. The angry appliance repair person. For the record, you're looking at them. So, this presentation is going to talk about having a refrigerator or a freezer in a garage. Now, obviously, if the garage is heated, that is exactly like your house. Everybody's happy. In today's world, with the electronics that we use in refrigerators and some freezers, it makes it difficult for it to work in colder temperatures. Now, I'm going to get a little technical here. I apologize, but I'll try to make this as plain as I can. Some of the refrigerators of old, ones made when I was a wee little tot in the 60s and 70s, those were different. They had cold controls with dials. Those dials, the cold control would sense the temperature of the freezer, not the refrigerator. So since it sensed the temperature of the freezer, it was looking for the unit to stay at right around zero degrees. So if your garage was not heated and your garage would get down to 30, 35 degrees, or maybe even a little colder in the winter, who cared? The unit was looking for the temperature in the freezer. So everything was fine and everything worked. So let's say that one dies. Serviceman comes out and says, no, 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 not worth repair. You need a new one. Hopefully that serviceman is going to be considerate enough to tell you that if you buy a new simple top mount for your alcoholic beverages or your soda and you want to put it in your garage, it is not going to work unless your garage is heated. The computers that we use these days, they do not allow the refrigerator to work in an area where the temperature outside the refrigerator is colder than inside, not the freezer. So if the refrigerator is supposed to maintain about 40 degrees, give or take, then you are not going to be able to run that in a garage that's below 40 degrees. Now in the manuals, the manufacturers usually say 50, that if you try to put a new refrigerator in a garage that is, or in any space, that is below 50 degrees, that freezer will not stay cold. The unit will have no reason to run because it's below 50 in the room it's in. So therefore, the compressor will never turn on. If it never turns on, that freezer will start to warm up. Your items in the freezer will start to spoil, even though the refrigerator will be okay because you're in a refrigerator, basically, if you are in a garage in the winter that is not heated. So it doesn't need to run. So the freezer gets warm, the refrigerator would be okay. Obviously, in the summer, in the spring, this is not a problem. Only when the temperature drops. Now, when the temperature drops for a night or two nights, that's okay. I'm talking about when we, for some parts of the country, when you get into the winter and you are basically going to be below 40 degrees all day, all week, all month, that is not going to work. The new ones, the old ones could do it with that dial and the way it worked. But the new ones with the computers, they cannot work in that kind of atmosphere. Now, freezers are different. Freezers, they don't have a refrigerator to worry about. They're only worrying about the freezer. So a chest freezer or an upright freezer, they normally stay around zero degrees, sometimes to 10 degrees. So you can put a freezer only into a unheated space probably down to about 20 degrees, give or take. And I know it's very rare that a freezer will be in a place that drops below 20. You never know, some parts of the country that may happen. But most of the time, as long as that freezer is in an area that is, I'd say 20 degrees, no lower than that, that freezer should probably be okay. If you drop below 20 degrees, you might as well just turn it off and put your food in the garage and everything will be fine. But if it stays above 20, that freezer will be all right. But a refrigerator freezer, you need to be at least above 50 or it will not always stay consistent. I have a lot of homeowners that when I get out of my truck, I grab my tools and I am walking up to the house. They say, no, 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 no. Don't go to my house. This refrigerator is in my garage. And I go over them that that refrigerator is not going to work when it gets below 50 and then they get upset because they didn't know so now you know if you watch these presentations now you know you cannot put that new refrigerator even if you had one there for 30 years it will not work in today's world it has to be above 50 degrees in there for that refrigerator to maintain freezer temperatures keep that in mind when you go to buy one 
Uh, there might be some specialty refrigerators. You'd have to ask a salesperson or check on the internet you, that you might be able to get a refrigerator for a garage, but it has to be specialty made for that purpose. There are not many of them out there, but there might be one or two and they are kind of expensive. You have to decide if it's worth that or not. So for the senile thought each week, this one is a little dear to the heart here, me being in the business for over 30 years, born in the 60s. I understand that when I was young, I would be a serviceman, and I have done this since high school, and I would be servicing, and I started literally at minimum wage back then, and worked my way up. The more I learned, the more money I made, because it's very simple. The more money that this person makes for the boss, the more money he can make. It's that simple. Well, in today's world, things aren't always that way. I have a lot of younger people that do ask me about being an appliance man. And then they say, well, I want to make $50,000 a year as soon as I start. You can't do that. That's very difficult to do if you don't have any training and you have to be trained by that person. That's not something they can expect them to do. So these days, it is a shame that a lot of the younger generation they want to make that money up front right away. There are exceptions, of course. There are exceptions to all. But a lot of the younger people that I speak to, they are looking for that, uh, forgive this phrase, that payday. They want that right away. So in this situation, in the situation I have been involved in, a lot of times they want to make a lot more for fixing appliances than they can actually afford to pay them until they're trained. The more you learn, the more you make, which that is the way we were all taught a long time ago. But the people I have spoken to, a lot of times it is not that simple. So I wouldn't mind having, especially with inflation going up, and everyone knows I don't have to go into detail about how much things cost today versus what they costed in the 60s. Everybody knows that. So with that being said, there is a lot going on where I think a younger individual, if they are willing to work and they're willing to learn, maybe it's worth a chance to pay them a little more to attract them. Now, to do that, that means this guy who owns the business has to make more. That means the companies have to pay him more. That means appliances may have to cost more. So the industry can make more money in general to pay people to come into it. If people are not willing to pay more for a washer or a dryer, then the company cannot pass those monies along down the line, as we say, to be able to afford to pay entry service people more money. But if we don't do that, they're going to see that $50,000 in another career, and they're going to go to that, where we can afford to do that, and therefore, we're not going to have any young people in the field. So, I think we have to reevaluate I guess is the word I'm looking for I'm not a very smart guy hard for me to put this stuff together sometimes so I think we need to reevaluate how we get them pay them so we can get them possibly to make more up front so therefore we can attract them but to do that this gentleman who owns the business needs to make more something to think about and that doesn't just apply to appliances of course that can apply to any kind of service work out there but if we don't change something soon, it's possible in 10 to 15 years, there's not going to be anyone around to fix anything we need repaired. Think about it. So, as always, we thank you for spending some of your day with us.